tampons. What was Aki thinking? She was thinking that your makeup should look like a real person, remember? Yes, but I am not a real person. I am Zoe. And you've never looked better. Especially these shots with Mike. They're hot. Really? I guess I do look pretty in a casual sort of way. And you also look five years younger. And for once, you're giving the other model just as much attention as you're giving to the camera, which makes you look accessible. Yeah, but do I want to be accessible? Oh, you're kidding big time. For one thing, this spread is going to kill the diva rep you've been picking up lately. Ciao, my gorgeous ones. Where are you going? Oh, New York awaits. I have deals to make, people to see, and small towns give me the hives. Uh, not so fast, Richie. You're not going anywhere. to the Bureau. They've agreed to transfer me here. Toked down. Well, I knew you wanted some time off, but I didn't think you liked it enough here to move. Well, I I'm not sure I do. Well, isn't that a decision you should make before putting in for a transfer? Well, who knew they'd even look at my request, let alone grant it? Uh, do you know the odds against that happening? So you just gave it a shot? It's the last time I trust governmental inefficiency. <laughs> So now the real question is, do I make the move? that it matters to you. drive yourself to the hospital? Yeah. Cal, you can't do that. Well, of course I can do it. I've been driving myself around since I was 12 years old. You know what I mean. Oh, come on now. You're not going to start getting negative on me, are you? I had enough of that at the hospital. You're supposed to be trying to keep my spirits up. Cal, you have had a lot of progress over the last month, and the last thing that I want to do is undermine your confidence. Good. But... Give me the car keys. Why do you want to do this? I'm not trying to do something difficult, for crying out loud. I'm not planning to walk to the hospital. No, you're planning on getting behind the wheel of a car and driving yourself alone. Are you sure that you're ready to do Darling, something like I that? Darling, if I didn't think I could handle it, I wouldn't be trying to do it. It's, it's just something that I uh, need to do. Okay, well, well let, me, let me ride shotgun then. Well, I'd be kind of missing the point, wouldn't it? I want to know if I can uh, make it on my own. You don't need to. You've got me. Well, you know me. I'm always have been kind of a stubborn cuss. All right, fine. I can be stubborn, too. And it's my job to make sure that you're okay. Connor, I don't want my wife to be my nursemaid. That's not what I meant. No, I know. It's just... Do you know I 
it would do to me if something happened to you and I wasn't there? I know, darling. You'd feel responsible and guilty. I would never forgive myself. But nothing is going to happen. All right. The second you get to Susan's office, and I do mean the very first second you call me. I'll do it. here today I've been looking all over for you we were supposed to have lunch at the club today I called you at the house you weren't there I've been worried no about for you lunch today well I'm sorry if we had a date it certainly slipped my mind I don't remember oh, it, it slipped your mind yes. you obviously had more important things to do could you tell me why it's a long sad story one that you won't share with me I'm sure since when have you ever been interested in anything in my life Oh, I see. I guess I'm going to have to figure this out on my own. Well, let's see. Hmm. Oh, Lily, stop. Does this have something to do with Sam? Kirk and Sam having problems? This isn't a game. They're not having any more problems. Samantha's left Oakdale. What are you, what are you talking about? What, left, where is she? Where's she gone to? I don't know where she's gone. Wait, this is not a game anymore. No. Stop being so mysterious. Tell me what's going on now. She has left Oakdale for good. And we have Kirk to thank for that. Uh, Sarah, my darling, I have meetings stacked up in Manhattan. And besides, I've already blown an extra day out here in Green Acres. So I say mission accomplished, and I am out of here. Yeah, and I'd say that this is a very good first step in our long-term campaign to reignite well, Zoe's career. How long is long-term? Well, I'd unpack if I were you. Oh, I get it, right? You're, you're trying to make my life miserable you, I, for that dumping thing that I pulled, no, right? Zoe is one of the best in the world at what she does, and she needs to branch out. In what direction, if I may be so bold? Well, we're going to make her a personality. I like the way you think. And I fit into this scheme how? You're going to get her a big contract, a national endorsement, because that's how a model gets the heavy media hype by sticking to one product. Excuse me, aren't you forgetting something? <laughs> I got Zoe the gig as the new lipstick girl, and she blew it. In the first place, I'll be... I don't Zoe, I'm really not interested in it today. Okay? Would you take I know care of her? I know you were pitching for This Zoe. is untrue and unfair, guys, Zoe. Guys, let's not my fault. I wasn't blaming you. Hey, well, I'm sure Pound is like, hey, it doesn't matter whose fault it was. The important thing here is there are no scars, and it's... And no reason why Zoe still can't be the lipstick girl. Yes, there is. They hired another girl. So then you'll call the client and you get her fired. Sarah, we are not communicating here, okay? We lost the deal. It's over. Finito. Well, then you'll get it back and you'll do it fast because you're not leaving here until you do. Well, Susan's just about to examine me and as soon as she's done, I'll drive straight back. Of course I will. Will you stop worrying about me? Bye. Coming over here on your own was not one of your smarter moves, you know? Well, I figure I got to start relying on myself more. I'm all for my patients being self-sufficient. But it wasn't necessary if Connor was home. If she was there? Might be a time when she isn't there. Oh, I see. Why don't you sit down, Cal? Now, wait a minute. <sighs> what do you see? Maybe this is none of my business, but did something happen between you two while you were away? That spa's in a beautiful place. Way out there in the middle of God's country. I forget how much I miss the West. You know, life out there just seems... I don't know, it just seems bigger. All the way around. I don't notice it so much when I go back there to work because I'm so busy, but this time... This time I really had a chance to, to take it all in. That's called being on vacation. Yeah. Um, way up in the mountains, you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful. The, the uh, sky is, uh, well, you know, that night sky. If you haven't seen a western sky, you haven't seen the sky. I mean, after all these years, the stars still blow me away. 
I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, I even found a massage therapist out there who gives almost as good a massage as you do. Oh, well, think about that. And I brought you a present. These are some of her oils. And there's one in there that she uh, claims has real healing properties. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. So you and Connor had a really good trip. Oh, yes. Yes, getting away did everything I wanted to do. We even, uh, even kind of forgot about the miseries we were going through. So if you had such a good time, why are you so down? in his life. I don't have the right. Well, do you want to move here? I don't know. I'm not usually such a wimp. When I'm on the job, I can make a decision in five seconds flat. Well, how do you decide what to do when you're on the job? Oh, I weigh the pros against the cons, and then I jump in on the heavier side. Well, maybe it's time to start weighing. Okay. My reasons for and against leaving Chicago. Well, the first would have to be against. I would miss the pizza. There is this place in the neighborhood, and they make a killer pizza, Bianca. And I'd be leaving everyone I know. And I'd be leaving the Chicago division, which is not a fast-track career move. Well, it sounds like against is winning. What made you put in for the transfer in the first place? There's this little voice inside of me that keeps telling me that I'm in a rut. And nothing's happening in my life. It's time to move on. I can relate to that. You can? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've heard that little voice for years. It's been keeping me company a long time. So should I listen to it? It's your call. A lot of people know when it's time to move on. Well, most people do. Sometimes it's just hard to do it. Okay, then. Help me decide. No. I think you know. Where'd you go? Just uh, taking care of a little business. I call some people I want to hook up with when I get down to uh, South Beach. Just let them know I'm on my way. Don't talk like that. Like what? You're saying that ugly stuff about leaving me. My parents will be back for at least a week. We could do some serious partying in this town. Yeah, well, I gotta hit the road for Florida. You're blowing off a major good time. Yeah, well, that's just the way it is sometimes. Look, I got some family here I ought to see, and then I'm, I'm splitting. You really are a jerk. You know that? Whatever. As soon as I call my uncle, I'm out of here. There he is. Officer, that's the man we're charging. What's going on? You're under arrest, pal. For what? Assault, you clown. Wait a minute. I would advise you not to do anything foolish like resist. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Sarah, my love, I have tried to get the lipstick contract back for Zoe. I begged the client to reconsider. I mean, I crawled to the little creep. Frederick Patterson is many things, but he is not little. Oh, no, I was talking about Frederick Jr. Oh! Oh, yes. 
Daddy Dearest made him vice pres in charge of everything on the lipstick account. Five times, buddy? Oh! Can we get back to the subject here? Why did Junior turn you down? Well, it seems there's a feeling that Zoe is a teensy bit high risk. Because she got caught in a fender bender? I, I don't buy that. This is totally unfair. Uh, you know, I hate to keep bringing up unpleasant history, but do the words Buenos Aires have any meaning for either one of you? I am ruined, okay? I told you I would never be able to live down what happened on that miserable shoot, even though it wasn't my fault. Listen, my darling, you were hell on wheels in Buenos Aires. The crew opened up the champagne after you were fired. You cannot talk to me like that. <laughs> Sarah, please don't let him talk to me Sorry. like that. <sighs> Richie, okay, I know you tried, and Zoe and I are very grateful. But would you just give it one more shot? Don't know me, Sarah. Look, I didn't want to have to tell you this, but there's another reason why Zoe's not going to get the contract back. And that is? They signed Kay Birch. Uh, Kay Birch? Are you serious? Deadly. Why didn't they just find someone on the street or go to the local kennel? Richie, you know Kay Birch isn't even in Zoe's class. My class? What about my planet? They had to be desperate to settle for Kay. I know you can change their minds. I know you can make them change their minds. Sarah, you listen to me. The contract is gone, okay? Let it go. I mean, there's going to be other ones. Not like the lipstick gig, okay? We need this. And if you're not willing to do something to get it back, then I will. So you're saying that Kirk did something to push Sam away? Yes. Yeah, you, you got it. What could Kirk have done that was so terrible? <sighs> Sweetheart, we don't really have to go into this this Oh, minute. yes, we do. Come on. Well, Kirk is not all that he has seemed to be of late. Oh, I assume that you've fired him oh, from yes. worldwide? Oh, yes, I fired him. And I'm going to do whatever I can. I mean, whatever I can manage. I'm sure I can manage something. See, that he doesn't work again. I don't get this. I, mean, I know you guys had some problems in the beginning, but I thought Kirk had proven himself. I remember you saying that you couldn't live without him. Don't remind me, darling. All right, tell me, what did Kirk do to Sam? Please tell me. I mean, as far as I've seen in the past, he's been a devoted husband to oh, her. Oh, no. if you could have heard him last night, he wasn't very devoted. Okay, come on. Tell me what's going on, please. Okay. All right. I can't put it off. Uh, put what off? What I have to say is, is it's, it's going to hurt. It, it's painful, and it concerns you and uh, our relationship. Yours and mine? Yes. And it, it's, it's very painful. How could what Kirk did to Sam be painful for me? Because he didn't just hurt Sam. He hurt you. Because he hurt Damien. Damien? What about Damien? I want you to tell me what's going on right now. Meet the Carolinas' newest cheerleaders tonight at 6 on News Channel 3. I was doing some consulting for Kingsley Malta. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Kirk was involved. And he discovered what Umberto Manzoni was up to. And they became partners. Oh, my God. Now, I, I, I don't believe that Kirk had anything to do with the illegal activities, like the gun running and the drugs, but he knew. And he kept his mouth shut, and so he got his cut off the top. Now, I know this because I've got the record of their financial transactions on a little computer disk that I recently acquired. I don't believe this. I didn't believe it either when I heard it. Are you all right, baby? Do you want a glass of water? I'm fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, he was so I'm upset. so sorry. The night of the plane crash. I thought it was because Damien was on the plane. Then we found out that Sam was on the... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. What was Sam doing on the plane? Did she have something to do with no, this, too? No, no, she didn't. She really didn't, but she did know about the disc. So she asked Kirk about the disc, and he made up a story for her that he was working undercover to try to catch him on Sony. And she believed him. Of course she did, because she loved him, and she was married to him. Right. And she took the disc, and she went to the plane because she wanted 
Damien to have the disc before he met with the FBI. Oh, she wanted to convince Damien that it was all a misunderstanding, that Kirk was innocent. And that's what she saw from her point of view. That's what that was going on. And then, oh, Kirk knew why she was on the plane. That's why he was so crazed. No, I don't. I think he was really shocked. I remember her finding out that the plane was sabotaged. I remember thinking back. I'm thinking how strange Kirk's reaction was. Like, he didn't want me to know something. Like, he was hiding something from he me. He didn't want you to know. He didn't. He wanted dead ends so that he'd never have to take the consequences of his actions. I have a question for you. How long have you known that this has been going on? Oh, baby, it's, I've known for several painful, painful weeks. Weeks? Yes, that long. I was waiting. I was waiting to see what would happen. I thought maybe he'd hoist himself on his own petard. You know, I, I, I kept Mum, which is very hard for me to do. I did speak to John. I mean, I did. Oh, you did? Uh, you told John? I did because I, I had to, It was painful. I had to talk to somebody. I mean, I had just begun possibly to trust Kirk again. It's hard when you're just about to trust someone again. Yes, it is. Especially when it's your own mother. What are you talking about? How could you do this? Trick, do you? Not if I can help it. Not when it concerns people that I really care about. Well, come on, Cal. Let's uh, let's do this exam. You know, while we were at that spa, everything was hunky dory between us. And then you had to come back. Yeah, and then we had to come back. As soon as the airplane started to circle, Oakdale Airport, like a bubble descended over Connor. And I could see her in there, and I could hear what she was saying, but I couldn't get to her. It just shut down. You think maybe you're a little oversensitive to Connor's moods? If you're telling me that I am not giving her enough space, I have to tell you that I think a lot of this space is hogwash. I mean, what do you need so much space for if you're in love? Well, you have to give people their space or have a good old-fashioned fight. Sometimes that clears the air. Well, at least a good old-fashioned fight gives you an excuse to make up afterwards. <laughs> right. I'll bet you've had some doozies. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Quite a few, as a matter of fact. I bet you're no slouch in that department either. <laughs> well... Come on. I try not to worry about Connor too much. You know, a lot of people get the blues when they come back from vacation. Yeah, well, I suppose that's part of it. I remember a vacation I went on with Larry. It was so perfect, I never wanted to come back. And then when I did come back, I was in the worst mood for a month. Speaking of Larry, I notice you're not wearing your ring. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, divorce is almost final. I'm sorry. So am I. Not for what it was at the end, but for what it could have been. Mm -hmm. Those could have beens will get you every time. Yeah. But it was the right thing to do, and I thank you. For what? Well, I thank you for giving me a push. There I was, my marriage was over, and I just was putting off the inevitable. You didn't need a push. You're a courageous woman. I, I envy you. Why do you envy me? Larry walked out on me. I didn't have a choice. You do. I know that. Well, don't be hasty, okay? Give it some time. Be patient. I'm, uh, I'm trying. Just one day at a time, you know? Put one foot in front of the other. All those old cliches, they work the best at a time like this. Yeah, I hope you're right. Yeah, all this patience better pay off in the end.
lot of reasons against. I was hoping you could help me the other side. I think I can handle that. Well, for starters, we don't have a place that serves a killer pizza, whatever you call it. But we've got Emilio's, and you've been there, and they've got a great linguine and clam sauce. Oh, good point. That linguine does make the pizza a bit of a wash. So what else have you got? Well, there's lots of local attractions. But most of all, it's the people that live here that I like. Like Mrs. Jackson down at the supermarket. She can't read the label. The boy at the cash register helps her instead of hassling her. And the tourist girl, when she won the state science fair, she got first place. The church raised the money to send her out to the Nationals because her family couldn't afford to. Sounds too good to be true. It kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> but welcome to small town life. We have a share of crime, but we also have the stuff that makes the headlines, as you well know. But the thing I like the most about being in a small town is your neighbors and the people that know you. You walk down the street, people say hi. I like that. It does sound tempting, just to escape from the rat race and get to know your neighbors. All right, keep going. You're making a good case for Oakdale. Hey, I'm a regular walking chamber of commerce for this place. But I haven't gotten to the main reason why I think you should stick around. Which is what? Well, I think you should stick around so you can give me a chance to figure out what T and T. Jones stands for. Mmm, that could take a very long time. Tatiana? <laughs> okay, well, I got lots of time to figure this out, right? Mm, I hope so. Only problem is, do you have time for another woman in your life? so good to see Casey home again. I felt like I could breathe for the first time in weeks. <laughs> Thank God that's over. Yeah. Casey seems to be doing pretty well considering what he's been through. I suggested, though, that they have him checked out by his pediatrician. Well, you know, I thought he seemed good. <laughs> Actually, did you hear what he said to your mom when she was talking to him about leaving the clues for Tom and Margo. Uh -uh. She, sa she said, what a smart boy he was, and he looked her straight in the eye and said, yes, I know. <laughs> that sounds more like a Dixon than a Hughes. Oh, come on, never mind. The important thing is, Casey's home, and it was a lovely party. Oh, boy. It's good to see Tom and Margo smile again. I'll stay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe uh, the Hughes family is getting back to normal. Hello? Is, is this Dr. Robert Hughes? Yes, it is. Hey, Uncle Bob, it's Ryder. Uh, I, I'm afraid I don't know anybody named Ryder. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot. You used to call me Ted. Ted Ellison, Don and Mary's son. Teddy! Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I go by Ryder now. Oh, oh, it's Don and Mary's son. Oh, hey, listen, uh, is everybody okay? Your folks are all right? Cool, I think. Last time I saw them, I've kind of been on the road for a while. Where are you calling from now? Oakdale. He's in town. Listen, uh, we want you to come right over to the house. Kim and I insist. Absolutely. I I'd like to, Uncle Bob, but uh, that's kind of a problem. Uh, well, you see, the thing is, I'm in jail, and I was wondering if you could bail me out. She was in an automobile accident, and she backed out as a professional courtesy because she didn't want to hold you up in case she couldn't go in front of the camera, but she's fine. Yes, yes, I, I realize that you've hired Cambridge, but there are ways around these things. Nothing's written in stone. Junior, Junior, uh, do you have any idea what, what your daddy will do to you if he knows you passed on Zoe for Kay Birch? You will be back in the mailroom, so... He hung up. I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. Richie, you don't really think that this is over. Well, it better not be. Look, I want that job, and I don't care what you have to pull to get it. Mm -hmm. 
So you're telling me that you knew about Kirk and Alberto Malzone all this time, and you never bothered to tell me. I wasn't ready. I wasn't sure that you were able to hear it. Haven't yet. you heard that I've been trying to find Alberto Malzone? You could have had some information that could have helped me. There are other people involved here, dear. There are other people and other issues. Forget issues. Anything that has to do with Damien's death concerns me. I had to protect Samantha. I bided my time to protect oh, her. I see. So you don't think Sam deserved to know the truth about her own husband? The right way at the right time. The right way. Your way. Yes. Oh, I did my best. When are you going to stay out of people's lives? Stop playing God. I did my best and you will realize that when you are calmer. The way Sam realized it. No wonder she left town. Funny, darling, very funny. Let's just get back to the subject. Kirk must be made to pay for everything that he's done to all of us. I'm sure you have a plan for that now. Yes, I do have a plan. I have a very nice, simple business plan. We get our lawyers, we go to court, he's indicted. No, yes, he's not this time. And he goes, no way. For once in our lives, we're going to go by my plan. You're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. And thank you for that pep talk. I really need it. Uh, I know that it's not easy when a marriage is going through a rough patch, but it takes a lot of strength to hang in there, and it's worth it. I admire you for it. It takes a lot of strength to know when to cut your losses, and I admire you for that. Yeah, well, hey. Used to be that uh, I would have gone to pieces, so something. You know, Susan, I'm a self-made man. Everything I know, I learn by watching other people. I'll take a tip from anybody I think can teach me something, and I've certainly got my eye on you. Well, I've got my eye on you, too. So don't forget to uh, make an appointment with my secretary for your next checkup. Fair enough. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, Cal! Um, you know, I, I, I have a present for you, too. It, uh, got it when, uh, you were at that spa. Oh. Well, now, what in the world could this be? I know what this is. This is a real beauty. This is a Union soldier. It's an infantryman. Vermont Regiment. Brattleboro Boys. Oh, now, you didn't have to do this. Oh, yes, I did. I saw him in a catalog after we had that talk about the Civil War, and as soon as I read his story, I knew that he had to belong to you. His name was Roy Wilmot. He was wounded defending Cemetery Hill from Pickett's Charge. Uh, he was hit three times, but he stayed on, held his position until the very end, and, well, you know what happened to that skirmish. <laughs> yes, George Edward Pickett and his Virginians got their butts kicked, and the uh, momentum, as they say, swung to the north. Right. And Roy Wilmot, who was told by the Army doctors that he would never walk again, he marched on to Richmond, stayed with his regiment till the end of the war, and he returned to, to Brattleboro, a hero. And if you think there's a message behind this present, you'd be absolutely right. My schedule is wide open. I have plenty of time. If you decide you want to stick around. Oh, in theory you do. But I was here when you ran into her. Just a little while ago, remember? Well, you knew there was another woman. I told you about her. Oh, you told me it was over. But I'm beginning to wonder. Are you sure you let her go? I thought you didn't want to talk about ex-girlfriends anymore. I don't. I'm just having a little bit of a trouble with the ex part, and I think you are too. I'm doing the best I can, T. Jones. I believe you. Can I give you some advice? Shoot. Sure. Even though you're wrestling with your past, don't hold back on your future. You could be missing out on a very good thing. Okay. I'll make you a deal. I'll go for my future if you go for yours. Let Oakdale be that fresh start you were looking for. What do you got to lose, huh?
sweeten the deal. If you decide to stay, I'll throw in my services as your personal tour guide. What do you say? You're making this awfully hard to resist. Then why don't you stop trying? Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Jones, why are you making this so complicated? This already is complicated. No. It's simple. We're talking about a move that'll give you easy access to some of the best linguine and clam sauce in the world. And some really nice neighbors. All you have to do is say yes. Come in! Come in! Oh! Teddy, I'm so glad to see you. Uh -uh. He's known as Ryder. Oh, oh, right. Whatever. Uh, what happened? Well, the judge set the bail at $500. I paid the court, and here we are. Well, that's simple enough. But what did you do to get yourself arrested? Nothing. Well, oh. come on. Sit down. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I, I made some sandwiches. Oh, good. I suppose uh, you tell us how you happen to be in Oakdale. Well, I was on my way to South Beach, and I hooked up with this, this girl that lives, you know, in Oakdale. She wanted me to hang out, you know, for a few days, so it was okay with me. I thought I'd look you guys up and, uh, and split, but I don't know. Just everything happened so fast, it, uh, it, was, it was crazy. So what did happen? Well, this girl, her, uh, her folks have, a, you know, a lot of money, and they belong to the, uh, to the yacht club, so she suggested that we go there. So I went into the men's locker room to use the phone to, you know, call you guys, and I saw this guy hitting on some other girl and she just was not having a, a good time and he just was not hearing her tell him no so since he was so scared to kick him really where where did the most good i um i tossed him across the room oh good for you yeah well then all hell broke loose the uh, the guy came back with his dad and and the cops and uh i got arrested but you know for doing nothing oh honey Maybe you should call Don and Mary. No, there's no need. I, if you don't mind, I'd rather do that myself. Oh. I told Ryder he should stay with us until he gets his court date. Oh, absolutely. Although, you may find Oakdale a little tame. <laughs> don't worry, I'll find the action. I always do. I knew Oakdale was a mistake. I'm going to die forgotten and unloved out here in the cornfield. Zoe. Well, it's true. If I never, if I wouldn't have been so bored, I never would have stowed away in the car with Mike. I never would have gotten in a car accident. And my life wouldn't be over. Zoe. Well, it is over, Sarah. At least my career is anyway. The lipstick deal was my last chance, and now it's dead. The lipstick deal? deal is not dead and neither are you and i'm not going to play this game this time what game look if you think i'm trying to play a game come on zoe we go through this every time you hit a slump you announce your life is over and i start singing verses of the sun will come out tomorrow and eventually something turns up because that's the way this business is and then you're on top again until the next time hey whatever works it doesn't not for me not anymore I've got other things on my mind, Zoe. I don't have time for the drama. You're quitting. I knew it. I am not quitting. I am just not going to hold your hand anymore. Your career is not over. You're just hitting a dry spell, which will end, just like all the others do. Well, there's always a first time. We are coming out of this. If you'll just give me a chance to concentrate, we can salvage this lipstick deal. Now, you know what? Now, Richie is right. The lipstick deal is over. And my career is over. You're not going to do anything to Kirk, Mother. Got it? Have you lost your mind entirely? Have you not heard anything that's been said Every here? Every word. Kirk is morally responsible for Damien being on the plane. I got that. Darling, he must pay for what he did. There has got to be some kind of orderly procedure. Yes, You're right. But first thing he's going to do is he is going to help me find the man that killed my husband.
glasses by Outlook Eyewear. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.